Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just another minute. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, good morning, everybody. We're going to get started. Thanks again for joining us today. We have a very exciting uh, webinar, and it's around role based access control and administrative units. My name is Barry Wong. I'm a security and compliance specialist for state and local government and customers. So many of you we anticipate are uh, either part of the department or agency in a shared tenant environment. And if that is the case, uh, today's presentation is really geared to you. So before we get started, a couple of things in this uh, in this platform, we have a Q&A section, a button at the upper part of your screen. Please feel free to put your questions in there and they will be answered appropriately by our team. Um, also, our presenters today, we have two technical specialists. One is Leo Ramirez, who will start us off today. And then um, Bhavana Bhatia, she goes by BB, is going to take over and then Leo is going to come back and join us and then I will close up for this session. But before we get started, I am going to share with you our obligatory dad joke. So um, let's see, Eamon, I have a question for you. I'm ready. What is the difference between a well-dressed cyclist and a scruffy man on a tricycle? Ooh, that's a tough one. I have no idea, Barry. What is it? A tire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All like right. Th thank you all for bearing with me on that bad dad joke. Not that you had a choice. And without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Leo. Leo, all yours. Thank you so much, Barry. And I'll, as always, thank you for the dad joke. I just want to start off uh, saying a few things before we begin. You know, me and BB's role here at Microsoft as compliance technical specialists, our area of expertise is a purview suite. And this is going to include the solutions that we have for data security, data governance, compliance, and risk. And we primarily work with state and local government customers, helping them address their use cases with our solutions in the purview suite. In fact, our team, we, we started this purview community for SLG customers because we wanted to provide a platform to share these real use cases that are coming from customers with other customers so that they could benefit. I can tell you we're very passionate about today's topic because it's probably the number one use cases we're encountering with state and local government customers. And now there's finally, finally a solution in, SO, in, in purview that's gonna help address this huge need for state and local government customers. Now what you're gonna see today is just one example of how Microsoft is meeting customers where they are. Let's just get started. Leo, you are on mute. Sorry, have I been on mute the whole time? 
No, no just, just, on this just on the slide. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, just to repeat, this is the typical scenario we're seeing with government customers. They're in a single tenant, shared tenant that's managed by a state, a city, or a county. Now, this is usually central IT is managing the tenant. There's multiple agencies in the tenant, like Department of Human Services, Department of Justice. Now, this type of architecture comes with some challenges, like we see here. Agency admins, they typically have no access to the tenant so that they can create or manage policies. They have, they can't see alerts or audit events. They have no visibility on what their risks are. And only central IT are the ones that can access the purview portal, create policies, view alerts, view audit events. Now, in the end, this creates a lot of work for central IT. Let's move on. So these are the challenges we're hearing from customers in SLG that are in this shared tenant. Central IT is usually saying something like, you know, we have limited resources. We'd like to create these policies for these various agencies within the tenant. And we really like to, to delegate administration to the agency admins as long as it doesn't impact um, other agencies or introduce more risk. And then you have agencies like the Department of Health or Department of Justice. Department of Health typically needs to meet requirements for HIPAA, but they don't even have access to the tenant to be able to create policies to uh, prevent HIPAA data from being leaked or protected. Same thing with uh, uh, Department of Justice. There's CGIS data that they want to protect uh, and prevent from leaving the organization um, in an unauthorized way. But again, they don't have access to create or manage policies, much less view alerts. So here is a solution that can help administrative units with our back scoping. Now, administrative units, and you're going to see this in the demo, it's a feature that you can configure in Azure that allows you to subdivide your tenant, your organization into different units and then assign those units to specific admins so that they can manage the users in that unit. And what this does, I'm proud to say and happy to say, is that it solves this use case for central IT who are managing the shared tenant because it gives them a way to delegate access to the different agencies or departments so that they can create their own data security policies. And just to be clear, when I say uh, security, data security, we're talking about information protection and data loss prevention. It also solves use cases for agencies who are managed in the shared tenant by central IT. They can now manage their own policies for data security. And they can also gain access to dashboards, view alerts, manage alerts, and audit events. So here's how you can use admin units. Central IT, they can define the granular scopes in the purview portal and then ring fence those agency admins to their specific admin units where their uh, members are scoped, where their users are scoped. Agency admins will have granular user scopes so that they can manage their users with different policies. And if we look here, think of Department of Health, Department of DHS, the admin teams in these agencies being able to manage policies for their own users. And what's nice about this feature is that there are multiple different roles that can be scoped for different types of access, uh, privileged access. So, and we're gonna see that shortly on the next slide. So these are the purview roles that support uh, administrative units. 
And what this means for you is that you can use out of the box purview roles to assign to agency admins. Now, each role group has a different level of permissions in the purview portal. For example, information protection admins, this role group can create DLP policies, information protection policies, but investigators, they can only view DLP alerts uh, and manage uh, DLP alerts as well as Activity Explorer, but they can also have read access to DLP policies. Now for our demo today, we're going to be focusing on the compliance administrator role because this particular role has access to multiple solutions in purview, and you're going to see this in the demo. Now, these are the Microsoft purview solutions that support administrative units. Data loss prevention, information protection, audit. These are the solutions we're going to be demonstrating today, but also communication compliance, records management, data lifecycle management, and coming very soon is administrative units is going to be supported in the insider risk management solution. There are some prerequisites in order to use admin units. You do need to have either Azure AD P1 or P2, but you also need to have one of these flavors of G5 licensing. So think of Microsoft G5. If you're currently a G3 customer, you'll need to have the, either the G5 compliance add-on or the G5 information protection and governance add-on. That's a mini SKU. These are some prerequisites. Now, the scenarios that we're going to be covering today, Bibi's going to go into a demo and show you how central IT configures the administrative units in the Azure portal. Then she's going to show you how central IT and the shared tenant can scope permissions to different role groups in the purview portal. Then she's going to also demonstrate how agency admins can create and manage information protection policies and DLP policies and how they can investigate DLP alerts um, and, and view audit activity. And finally, we're going to show you how Central IT, they continue to retain visibility on all data security policies and audit events, and how Central IT can continue to investigate alerts when needed. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to the amazing Bibi, and she's going to show you what all of this looks like in a demo environment. Hey, thank you so much, Leo, for providing an overview of administrative units, which is the most anticipated feature for our state and local government customers. And I'm super excited to be here today and talk about this feature. I'll be showing you a persona based use case demo that will cover all the scenarios that Leo mentioned earlier. So let's get started. Contoso is a fictitious government organization and it has multiple agencies. Now, for the sake of this demo, I am considering two Contoso agencies. One is the Department of Health, which I will also refer to as DOH, and then Department of Transport, which I will refer to as DOT. Now, all the agency users are in the same Contoso tenant. Contoso has a central IT team, and one of the Contoso IT admins is an Office 365 global admin, and manages the entire tenant. He is also a Microsoft Purview compliance administrator and can manage information protection policies, data loss prevention, data lifecycle management, as well as audit for all the users in the tenant. Now let's talk about these agencies. DOH and DOT deal with different types of sensitive data, and they have their own unique requirements to govern and protect the data. Currently, DOH and DOT have their own IT teams, but the agency IT admins do not have any administrative rights in the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. And that's why they have to request the Contoso IT admin to create and manage policies for their agencies. But in the future, 
DOHIT admin wants to create and manage information protection, DLP, audit, data lifecycle management for users in the DOH agency. And similarly, DOT IT admin wants to create and manage the policies for users in the DOT agency. So the first step here is to configure administrative units. Admin units are a common way to define structure across Microsoft 365 services. So we recommend that you prepare your admin units with their use across Microsoft 365 services in mind. Now in this demo, we have two agencies, so I will be creating two administrative units. I'll be creating a DOH admin unit that consists of all the DOH users and then a DOT admin unit that consists of all the DOT users. We will be creating these admin units through the Azure AD portal. If required, you can also create admin units using Microsoft Graph, PowerShell, or even Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You can add specific users to the admin units, or you can use dynamic membership rules to add users automatically to the admin units. One thing to note here is that members of dynamic distribution groups will not automatically become members of an administrative unit. So Microsoft Purview recommends using dynamic membership rules as a preferred method to set up the admin unit. Now in this demo, we will be using the Azure AD department attribute to define the dynamic membership rules. The Contoso uh, Central IT admin has ensured that department attribute for all the users are populated correctly. Next, the Contoso admin will create the administrative units from the Azure portal. So we are in the Azure portal and let's click on admin units. Now let's create an administrative unit for DOH. So I provided the name here and we will be choosing the membership type as dynamic user. This will help us create the rule to automatically add users to this admin unit based on certain attributes. Now in the rule builder, let's create an expression that says if the user's department is equal to DOH, then add the user automatically to this DOH admin unit. Now if a user matches the rule that we specified, they are added as a member to this admin unit. And if they no longer satisfy the rule, they are removed. You can see that the DOH users are now added to the DOH administrative unit. Please note that you can't manually add or remove a member to a dynamic admin unit. So you can see that this add member has been grayed out. Similarly, Contoso admin will create another admin unit for DOT and all the users with department attributes set to DOT will be added to this admin unit. All right, so we have finished creating the two administrative units here. Next, the Contoso admin will assign the agency admins to the built-in or to the custom purview role groups and then scope them to specific admin units. The Contoso admin adds the DOH admin and the DOT admin to the built-in compliance administrator purview role group because these agency admins should be able to manage information protection, DLP, audit, and data lifecycle management for their agencies. Now, if you have a large organization with separate teams for managing information protection, there's another team to manage data lifecycle management and audit, then you can add those admins to various role groups within the Purview Compliance Portal. We do provide granular role based access and role groups for permission management, and we encourage you to follow the principle of least privileges. In this demo, I'll be adding the users to the compliance administrator role group. So let's see how to assign the permissions to the agency admins. The Contoso admin has logged into the Purview Compliance Portal. Since he is a global admin and has organization management rights, he can assign permissions to the agency admin. So let's go to the permissions link here and then go to the roles. We will be assigning compliance administrator role to both the DOH and the DOT agency admins. So let's choose users. And here we will be adding the DOT and the DOH admins. 
Now we need to associate the admin units for these agency admins. So the DOH IT admin will be assigned to the DOH admin unit that we just created in the Azure AD portal. And similarly, the DOT admin will be assigned to the DOT admin unit from the Azure AD portal. So here you can see that the Contoso admin has the entire organization as his admin unit. So here the Contoso IT admin is the unrestricted administrator. That means he can scope various purview portal policies for the entire tenant, or he can also scope the policies to specific admin units. The DOH and DOT admins are now restricted administrators. That means they can scope the purview portal policies to only the admin units that they are part of. Now that the agency admins have the necessary permissions, let's see how they can start managing information protection policies for their own agencies. Now each department wants to create a sensitivity label that is available for their agency users so that they can classify and protect their corresponding agency's data. DOH admin will create a sensitivity label called Contoso DOH internal only for users in the DOH admin unit. And this sensitivity label will be applied by users to files and emails, and it will apply rights management such that only the DOH users can access the labeled files and emails. And once the sensitivity labels are in use, the DOH admin can check the Activity Explorer for labeling activities of DOH users. Similarly, DOT admin will create a sensitivity label called Contoso DOT internal only for users in the DOT admin unit. So let's start creating the information protection policies. Let's log in to the Purview Compliance Portal as a DOH IT admin. First step is to create the sensitivity label for DOH users. So I am under information protection labels and I'm going to create a label. So let's give it a name Contoso DOH internal only. This label will be applied by DOH users to emails as well as to files. And this label will apply both content markings as well as rights management encryption on the label content. This is where DOH admin can assign permissions and also restrict access to the content that the label will be applied to. So let's check the permissions. Here only DOH users will be able to access the label content and users from other departments will not have access to it. The DOH admin will now configure header, footer and watermark that will be applied to content when this label is applied. After the label is created, it's time to publish the label to DOH users using a label policy. Please notice that the DOH admin cannot see the information protection policies that have been published by Contoso admin or that have been published by other agency admins. He will be able to see only the policies for his administrative unit. So let's start creating the label policy and then publish this DOH internal only label. This label should be available only for users in the DOH admin unit. So let's select the admin unit and then DOH admin can only publish this label to the users in the admin unit assigned to him, which is the DOH admin unit. Let's make this label available to all the users in the DOH admin unit. And then give it a name and publish. So the label policy for DOH admin unit has been created. Once the sensitivity label is available to the DOH users, they can start using it and labeling activities can be monitored using the Activity Explorer. The DOT IT admin can go to the Data Classification Activity Explorer and he can check the labeling activities only for users in the DOH admin unit. So you can see there is a scope drop down here which will show all the admin units assigned to the DOH admin. And um, here you can see that DOH admin can see the labeling activities for Miriam, who is a user in DOH. Similarly, 
DOT admin will create a label for the DOT agency and a label policy for the DOT users. Notice how the DOT admin here cannot see the information protection policy created by the DOH admin. That's because the agency admin can see and edit only the policies for their admin unit. Once the sensitivity label is available to DOT users and they start using it, labeling activities can be monitored and DOT admin can come to the data classification activity explorer, choose the scope that is relevant to this DOT admin. And here you can see that LIGU is performing some labeling activities and DOT admin can see the labeling activities of LIGU so because he belongs to the DOT admin unit. Now let me also show you the end user labeling experience. Miriam is a user that belongs to DOH agency and LIGU belongs to DOT agency. And as per the settings, Miriam should be able to see the Contoso DOH internal only label and she should be able to access the contents with this label. And similarly, LIGU should be able to see the Contoso DOT internal only label and should be able to access the contents with that label. So I'm now logged in as Miriam from DOH and this is her mailbox. The Contoso DOH internal only label is published to only the DOH users and that's why she can see it here. She can also see other labels that are published by the Contoso admin to all the users in the tenant. Notice that she cannot see the labels that are published for DOT. Now Miriam applies this Contoso internal only label to the email, which in turn applies rights management and encryption such that only the DOH employees will be able to open and access this mail. Now, even though she's sending it to LIGU from DOT, LIGU will not be able to open this content. This use case makes sense when uh, departments want to send confidential communications only to their agency or only to their departmental employees. Now I'm logged in as Lee from the DOT team and this is his mailbox. Contoso DOT internal only label is published to only the DOT users and that's why Lee can see that here. And notice that he cannot see the DOH internal only label. This is the email that Miriam had sent him with the Contoso DOH internal only label and Lee cannot access the mail because the label had access rights only for DOH employees. So this is one of the end user experience for the labeling policies. Now let's see how admin unit can be leveraged to create department specific data loss prevention policies. Now, Contoso agencies, DOH and DOT have unique needs when it comes to protecting sensitive information. They want to create and manage their own DLP policies for their users. The use case here is that DOH wants to create a DLP policy to protect content that contains electronic protected health information or EPHI, and it should target all the users in the DOH agency. Also, DOH admin wants to check the DLP rule match reports of their agency users in the Activity Explorer. Similarly, DOT wants to create a DLP policy to protect content that contains electronic PII that targets all users in the DOT agency. Also, DOT admin wants to check the DLP rule match reports of their agency users in the Activity Explorer. So let's see how to implement this. To create the DOH specific DLP policy, the DOH admin logs into the Purview Compliance Portal, goes to the Data Loss Prevention Policy. Notice that he doesn't see any organization-wide DLP policies created by the central IT admin, and he cannot see any DLP policies created by other agency admins. So he'll start creating a new policy for his agency. He chooses a out-of-the-box, a uh, HIPAA DLP template that protects content that contains EPHI uh, information like healthcare, uh, insurance files, medical forms, uh, PII information like social security numbers, full names, physical addresses, medical terms and conditions, 
International Code of Diseases and so on. So let's give it a name called DOH DLP policy. And this is where the DOH admin can assign the scope for this DLP policy. So let's select the admin unit and let's assign it to the DOH org. Now the DOH admin will be applying this DLP policy to all the DOH users exchange uh, mailboxes, one of our business accounts as well as to teams locations. Currently, only Exchange, OneDrive for Business, Teams, and Device locations in DLP policy support the admin units. So here, let's verify that the DLP rule to protect the EPHI is set correctly. And then let's turn on the DLP policy. So the DOH DLP policy has been created. Now, if any DOH user, like example, Miriam, is sharing EPHI outside the organization, the DOH admin can check the DLP policy matches in the DLP alert tab. If any DOH user is sharing EPHI outside the organization, then DOH admin can check the DLP rule match activities in the activity explorer. Again, you can scope this just to the DOH organization and he will see the activities by the DOH users only. Now similarly, DOT IT admin has created a DLP policy for the DOT admin unit, and this policy prevents users from sharing content that contains PII, and this policy does not scan for any health information as such. Here you can see that the DOT admin can check the DLP alerts for users in the DOT admin unit. So Ligu belongs to the DOT team and his policy alerts are available to the DOT admin. And if any DOT user is sharing PII outside the organization, then DOT admin can check the DLP rule match activities in the activity explorer. Again, only the scope that is available to the DOT admin is visible over here. Now that we have department specific DLP policies in place, let's check the end user experience. Miriam belongs to DOH, and if she shares EPHI, like medical information, uh, social security numbers, or medical forms outside the organization, then DLP blocks her from doing so. Ligo belongs to DOT agency, if he shares medical information, then he is not prevented from doing so because his agency DLP only blocks him from sharing PII information. So I am right now logged in as Miriam in her mailbox. So you can see that she is sharing medical terms and conditions and social security numbers of some patients outside the organization to some random hotmail address. So she immediately sees this policy tip and it prevents her from sharing this sensitive content outside the organization. This is Lee from DOT and he has logged into his mailbox. Now, if he tries sharing medical info, then he's not prevented from doing so because he has a different TLP policy in place. So if Lee shares PII information like social security numbers, then his agency's DLP policy detects this and blocks him from sharing it outside the organization. So this is how DLP policy can be implemented to different admin units. Now let's see how administrative units can be used so that the agency admins can manage audit logs for users within their agency. Here the DOT, uh, sorry, here the DOH admin logs into the audit log page of the purview compliance portal and there is an admin units drop down over here that will allow doh admin to scope the audit log search to the admin units that they belong to notice that the doh admin can see only the doh admin unit and cannot see the dot admin unit over here let's now create a search to check all the activities for DOH users within a certain time range. And it creates a search job 
And when the progress is 100% complete, DOH admin can check the search results. Notice that the audit logs of only users who belong to DOH admin unit can be seen by the DOH IT admin. So the admin units here shows DOH and it's all Miriam's activities because she belongs to DOH. Similarly, DOT admin now logs into the audit log page of the Purview Compliance Portal and she selects the DOT admin unit and runs the audit log search. Notice that she can't see the DOH scope here. OK. And. Now when she goes to the audit log information, she sees only the audit logs of users who belong to the DOT admin unit. So Lee belongs to. DOT and that's why she can check Lee's audit logs over here. All right, so we saw how to create admin units. Uh, we also saw the policy experience from the agency admin as well as from the end user perspective. Now I will hand over to Leo to see the demo and policy experience from the Contoso admins perspective. Over to you, Leo. Thank you so much, Bibi. That was great. All right. All right. So here I am. I'm in the in the purview portal as the let's just say I'm the state IT admin for central IT. Now let's drop down to roles and scopes to see what role group I'm a member of. Here I click on roles under Microsoft Purview Solutions. And we can see that I'm a member of the Compliance Administrators Group. However, if we go down, we can see that I'm not part of an admin unit. My scope is organization wide. All right, let's go over to data classification. So this is the data classification page. And as we can see, I have access to this dashboard and this is very valuable information, especially if you're on the privacy team or the risk team or even certain members of the security team. Here we can see some high level statistics, some analytics of what kind of sensitive information is being detected in the environment. So for example, we see that one of the top sensitive information types is credit card numbers, social security numbers, and other types of sensitive information. Me as a tenant admin or the uh, data protection officer, I can also see how sensitivity labels are being applied across the organization because I have these analytics here. Now let's go over to the classifier so we can see sensitive information types. Now only compliance administrators, they can configure and they can modify, not modify the built in, but they can create sensitive information types that are custom. They can also create exact data match classifiers. But if we go over to the content explorer, there's tremendous value in here. So for example, when it comes to sensitive information types, we get a list of all the sensitive information that's being detected and where it's located, exactly where it's located. So for credit card numbers, I have over 6,000 in this particular tenant, and these are being detected and identified in locations like Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams. Now, if I'm a privacy officer and I want to better understand where uh, sensitive information is in SharePoint, if I click into this folder because I have the permission, the right role, I'm a member of the, the right role that can access this, I can actually drill into the SharePoint folders. So for example, if I go into this Mark 8 project team, I find that there's a file, a Word file that has credit card numbers in this. And this again is useful information as we're building our policy and our data security strategy for the environment in general. Right, so next let's go over to data loss prevention. 
Bibi showed you how agency admins that were given scoped uh, access for admin users can create policies. But let's see what the central IT admin, his view of uh, policies when it comes to data loss prevention. So we go over to policies, the central IT, the admin can see all policies. And we just had this question in the chat. So can see all policies that were created, but also even the policies that were created by DOH and uh, DOT. Now, why this is valuable, even though the central IT may no longer have to manage these policies, there may be incidents where they need to verify the configuration or somebody, one of the agency admins needs, um, needs assistance or central IT, they need to verify that these policies are meeting requirements for the city or the state or the county. So let's also go to alerts. We can see central IT, the admin can still see all alerts. But the nice thing is I no longer, central IT, I no longer have to manage all of these alerts. Agencies that now have access to their own alerts, that's their job now. My job just got a lot easier. Now, some of you that are in this webinar, in this call, some of you are in a central tenant, and I'm talking to the central IT admins, where you're managing 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 agencies in your shared tenant. Can you imagine all of that triaging? Well, that's something you probably already do, along with notifying the right stakeholders for the different agencies that are relative to these different alerts. That, that's a huge undertaking. All right, let's go over to Activity Explorer. Here, I can still see all activities that are related to DLP matches, sensitivity labels, things that are being changed. Still very useful information for me, just you know, to have some assurance that the agencies, they're making progress, but again, also useful to make sure we're in compliance as the tenant admin and as central IT. One of the nice things I can do in here is I can click on filters and create or and select from a scope. So I can actually search these different admin units for activities that are related to data loss prevention or sensitivity labels. Now, let's move on to information protection. I can still see all labels. All labels are still visible to me. I can even create labels. I can delete any one of these labels, and I can still see the labels that were created by DOH and DOT by their admins. Let's go over to the label policies. These are all the sensitivity label policies in the tenant, and I can still see all of them, even the ones that were created by DOT and DOH. And if we go over to the auto labeling policies, same thing here. I retain visibility of what agency admins are doing. And the nice thing about this particular feature is if you've worked with auto living policies before, well, there's a simulation feature uh, within those policies that you can configure so that you can, uh, you can validate whether sensitive information that's within data at rest or data in transit is being detected according to your needs. Well, that's, that's no longer my job as central IT. That responsibility can be transferred to the agency admins. And what this means for me, less work, less tickets, less overhead, and I can focus on my direct responsibilities. All right, let's move on to the audit solution. Here, we're in audit, and because I'm in the compliance administrator role group, I can do searches uh, uh, looking for activities that might have occurred throughout the organization. And I can even do things like search for activities that are related to 
data loss prevention. Maybe I want to know which agencies have created DLP rules, updated them, deleted them. This is valuable information to know, again, to ensure that they're doing things the right way. Another thing I can do, and BB showed you this as well in her demonstration, is that we can search by admin unit. And because I'm the tenant admin, theoretically I can search by admin unit or I can search throughout the organization, depending what my use case is. I might be helping an agency with an investigation they have going on. And what we're seeing here is that central IT, again, they're not losing visibility to alerts. They're not losing visibility to policies or audit. The only thing they're losing is work and overhead, but they're gaining time and flexibility so they can focus on other things and still allowing agencies to create their own data security policies. Now, I know people are probably asking, when's this gonna be available in GCC? Well, <laughs> the good news is that for audit and data loss prevention and information protection, October, 2023, less than two months, it's scheduled to be GA, generally available for GCC. This month, it's already available for commercial customers. This is amazing. This is why we're so excited. I know this has been something you've been waiting on for a long time, and so have we. All right, again, let's, let's go over the prerequisites. You need to have Azure AD P1 or P2, but also one of these flavors of G5. G5 All Love or G5 Compliance. This is an add-on that you can add on to your G3 or G5 Information Protection and Governance. This is a lower cost mini SKU add-on. One of these will get you started. However, before you purchase, you can actually do a trial from directly from your purview portal. So compliance.microsoft.com. If you're interested in testing this before you buy, there is what we call an easy admin trial that's available in your tenant. And this goes for 90 days. And if you need to extend, it's pretty easy to extend for an additional 90 days. So what this is gonna allow you to do is test all of the G5 capabilities in Microsoft Purdue. So think of communication compliance, insider risk management, compliance manager, some of the uh, advanced or premium templates, but also the, the capabilities that require the advanced licensing in DLP and information protection, which includes what we're talking about today, the admin units with RBAC scoping. Now with that, I'm gonna hand it back over to Barry so he can cover some additional details. Thank you. Nicely done, Leo. Okay, everybody, thanks again for joining us today. I'm gonna to wrap up with a couple of slides that are hopefully useful and you found this information useful and some follow-up items. So how do you get started with Purview? So the first and foremost is we have very specific Microsoft partners that have workshops pertinent to this discussion today. So if you if you have questions, here are some of the um, workshops that these partners have. Uh, but if you have questions on which partners, of course, it depends on where you're located. Um, there's an email uh, alias at the bottom of this slide, Microsoft SLG compliance at Microsoft.com. You can see there if you'd like more information about um, which partners, please send us a note and we will respond to you appropriately. Um, the second thing is if you have unified support, uh, if you don't have unified support, please contact us as well. We can put you in, in touch with that team. But through uh, unified support, there are specific workshops available um, for our purview solution set that we talked about today um, that you see listed there. And then Fast Track. If you're not familiar with Fast Track, this is a team of, of folks at Microsoft that their, their job um, in the company is to help our customers implement the solutions that they buy. 
So we have some dedicated uh, subject matter experts to our purview license set that can help you implement um, after purchase. And then again, as I mentioned, if you have any questions at all uh, about today's session or want to know about one of our partners or you have uh, want to schedule a meeting, please do contact us at, at mssglcompliance at microsoft.com. Next slide, Leo, please. OK, so um, one thing that we want to make sure that is clear is I mentioned the email alias. Certainly contact us there. We have some very specific resources, web pages, articles to today's session that you see here in the slide. And I might mention this recording will be available on a YouTube channel. We put the link there. All of our past webinars over the last year and a half are posted to that site. It's a YouTube channel again that you can see. Um, and then you can certainly have access to this information and the uh, the deck as well. Um, the other thing that's really important, many of you have already joined our Microsoft Purview customer community for SOG. It's a Teams community. Thank you. Uh, if you have not uh, joined that, please do. And moving forward, subsequent webinar invites will be pushed out from that Teams channel. So um, there, there's a lot of other resources that are going to be put in there, but it, certainly if you'd like to continue to join these monthly webinars around co compliance and data security, please join that community and you will receive sub subsequent uh, invites. Last but not least, uh, a month from now, we are doing these sessions now once a month. And so next month's session is equally exciting, if not more so exciting, because it's around open AI. And these very solutions that we talked about today within our purview solution set um, are really at the heart of Microsoft's AI responsibility model. So again, this is all around our purview solution set solution set within these in this webinar series, and you'll see that and how it applies to our um, AI responsibility model here at Microsoft. So um, that's all I had, Leo. Uh, so I think that is the last slide, but we'll uh, we'll stay on for a bit if you want to ask any questions. Um, really appreciate everybody's time again today and certainly look forward to you joining us again next month. But it, we'll stay on again to answer any questions if you uh, if you have them.